Hello everyone, this is Eli J. Brown slash Eli J. Brony and welcome to another Hero Factory review video. I have done the evolution of the heroes, each of the individual heroes over the uh, years. But for this one, I am going to be giving my overall thoughts on each series, like as a whole, like with each release of heroes and, and such. And I am going to let you know that in this series, I am going to be counting the, uh, the different Hero Factory series that have had two waves as one. Though, I'm not going to be doing that for Invasion From Below, because I've already... When those sets came out in 2014, I did already do an overview, like an overall thoughts on the minifigures released from that series. But just to let you know, waves one and two of Breakout will be reviewed together and the same will go for Brain Attack. But I will be looking over 2.0 and 3.0 separately because even though those were released the same year, they are different series despite having similar builds. But for this one, I am going to be giving my overall thoughts regarding the first installment of the Hero Factory series. Alright, so, we have six characters. We have Jimmy Stringer, Preston Stormer, William Furno, Duncan Bolt, Natalie Breeze, and Mark Surge. Now something that quite a number of Bionicle fans had noticed about these characters is that most of them are the same colors as the Toa heroes from Bionicle. Stringer looked like he, looking like a Toa of Earth, Stormer of Ice, Furno of Fire, Breeze of Air, and Surge of Water. Although the exception here is that Bulk, instead of being brown, he is silver, which isn't really all that much of a surprise that we wouldn't have a brown hero in this series since brown was pretty much a color that was dropped in Bionicle starting uh, with Toa Huki in the Toa Inika series. So it was quite obvious that they were going to replace brown with a different color. Of course, they did alternate between yellow and orange, and at one time tan. And I guess you would never have thought that they would ever use silver as the substitute for uh, brown. But this, is a, this was a new series, so they had to come up with something. And I guess it can be expected, considering how Kuki was kind of a silver, although he was a darker silver. Uh, while Bulk is pretty much a more standard silver than that. And of course we did get other characters introduced over the years, which would probably be closer to a Toa Stone than Bulk would be, you know, with Nex being an orange hero, Evo being yellow, and Raka being gold. Now, something that ver various uh, fans who have gotten these sets in 2010 had noticed would be the fact that half of the heroes have two actual arms, while the other half have uh, these uh, weapons. Oh. Oh. Yeah, let me move him out of the way. These weapons right here. Now, if you have seen my uh, evolutions video, you would know that I mentioned that the the official way that they had these weapons be added on is that they use a ball cup piece to go inside of the weapon and then attach that to the arm and how the arm would be really hollow when it's opened up like that. And as I said, I have fixed that problem by adding on a few pieces. Well, I didn't for Stringer because his weapon is completely flat on the inside, so I didn't need to add any additional pieces. He, his weapon just fit onto the arm very nicely. While with Stormer and Bulk, they have a different shape, which kind of keeps you from simply adding the weapon to an arm. So, lots of fans did not like that whole thing with the, um, with the weapon replacing an entire arm. Although something that was unique is that Bulk was made to have his weapon in his left arm, as opposed to Stormer and Stringer, who have theirs in their right arm instead. And I'm also pointing out that the uh, hand, at least on 
uh, storm. Well, a few pieces do have a couple of cracks in them, but since they are still usable, I am still using them, though may at some point have to replace them entirely because the cracks, as little as they are, can give away um, eventually. And the same goes for the eventual character and creature building system that is introduced in the next series. The different head designs, I really liked the different head designs. They were pretty cool, certainly sticking to the way that Bionicle had done it before, like if you got these uh, different hero sets, you could maybe use the masks for here for Bionicle mock making if you wish. Like you could use these for custom Glatorian. Some people have done that. And the hero cores, while this is the only time in the entire series where they are translucent as opposed to the opaque ones that we get in the uh, subsequent series, they were pretty nice additions. I really am disappointed that they didn't use uh, the transparent hero cores for any other series beyond this one. So pretty much this series is probably one of the more memorable ones for the translucent hero cores. So it's unfortunate that they didn't do the translucent hero cores again in the subsequent series. I do also like how they use different uh, body armor for each of the uh, heroes. Of course, they've also done that a few times in Bionicle, where some of the Toa would wear one type of armor over their torso, so the other would wear a uh, different type of armor. And you know, with the Toa and Nika series, there were like two types of main body armor, where half of the Toa wore one type, and the other half wore the other type. Well, with Hero Factory, we have a total of four different main body designs. Three of the heroes wear one type of design, while the other three heroes wear each wear one of the other three types. Like, the three different designs would be Stormer has one uh, unique main body piece, and Bulk also has a unique main body piece, and, Stri oh, and Stringer also has a unique uh, main body piece. The main body pieces that you see on these three guys, you do not see on any other hero, at least in the action figure series. Although, there are some heroes that are shown, like in the crowd scenes, they are shown to have the same body design, like Von Ness had the same main torso as Bulk. But, regarding only heroes that have been released as sets, these are the only three characters that you see their respective armor on. And then the fourth main body armor piece is the one that is shared among these three heroes. Inferno, Surge, and Breeze. Pretty much, they are technically clone sets of one another. They pretty much are the, um, well, they are identified as the rookie team, since in the story, they were rookies during the first Hero Factory storyline. They were new heroes that were recently created, and they were learning the steps on how to be a hero, so they could then become full-on heroes. Of course, the main body armor did not change after they graduated from rookie status, uh, but as you have seen in the TV series, we have seen that Stormer has always had the same main body piece. So pretty much, it's quite obvious that the designers at LEGO did choose to have this piece to use for all of the rookies in the series, while three more experienced heroes had different armor on them. But these were not armor that were rookie-specific, and not every rookie in the entire Hero Factory series use these armor pieces because any of the armor that the heroes wore in the first Hero Factory generation, like the first designs of the heroes, they've always had. They were always the same armor that each of the heroes wore throughout the series, uh, whether they were rookies or beyond being rookies. So that was a pretty nice uh, thing. Now, of course, my thoughts about the fact that they actually did things different involving around what gender each of the heroes 
are compared to Bionicle, such as how, um, in Bionicle, we would usually have a female hero be blue, while the green hero would be male. But they changed that in Hero Factory, where now, uh, Surge here, he is a male hero, and he is blue, and Breeze here, she is green, and she is the one female hero of the entire series. That was very unique that they decided to change that up. Certainly didn't want to make it seem too much like Bionicle, since they already did a lot of that involving around most of the colors that are used. But overall, it was a really nice start to the original um, Hero Factory series. Certainly a good way to show us that these were the people that made Bionicle and wanted to make something completely new. Now, some people do not agree that Hero Factory is as good as Bionicle, and some people may even think that Hero Factory is even better. For me, it's kind of an even-even there. I personally do not think that one series is better than the other. I just really like both series equally. I do not see there being any competition between these two different uh, series of characters. So that is about all that I have to say for the first series of Hero Factory Heroes as a whole. So thank you so much for watching and be on the lookout for more videos.